Greetings, Dan Sabo here. Um, it's been quite some time um, since I've done any uh, uh, video clips of local history, Plymouth area history. Uh, I've been organizing my files for quite a while, and uh, um, I thought now would be a good time to uh, do a short clip or two because just got my new webcam, and um, I understand there's some uh, talk about a new book being uh, uh, worked on by the Historical Society about local railroad history. So I found some photos of, uh, of uh, the rail yard. Uh, before I get started, though, I want to introduce you to a member of our family. This is Missy. Uh, she just showed up one day, and she's been with us ever since. Uh, um, we have three cats now. And this one I tried to shoo away. But uh, the, on the last attempt, she just stood up on her hind legs and wrapped her front uh, paws around my calf and would not let me go. So that was it. I think uh, animals choose people as much as we choose them. So anyway, I'm, I'm probably going to let her go now because she's getting antsy. So you want to get down? Want to get down? Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, I'm just going to grab this file. Um... But these are photos that uh, Davis B. Hilmer took. Um, this was this one has been one of my favorites over the years. Um, Uncle Davis shot this photo, um, 1913, and it is the Waterford train wreck. I'll just hold it up here. I, let's check out the autofocus and see how good it is. Engine number two, um, Waterford train wreck, August 17. 1912 and that's when he was just starting out his career as a uh, commercial photographer um and this is actually a postcard because he wrote it to his grandmother um george stark with his wife and i'll just read it to you it's kind of hard to read but this is davis b hilmer's handwriting and uh it reads dear grandma this is a picture of a wreck that occurred the 11th. A train was standing on the main track. Train number two came around the corner at the rate of 30 miles an hour. The engine and fireman both jumped from the cab. No one hurt Davis. And that was sent to Mrs. Amelia Starkweather, which was uh, Lydia Amelia Haywood, George Starkweather's wife. So I thought that would be... if. if the, 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 this may have been published before, I'm not sure, but I don't know if all the information went with it, but this is an actual original photograph that Davis B. Hilmer both shot and uh, also developed. So this is an, an original print that, that Uncle Davis did, and it's in beautiful condition. So that's uh, one. And they have another one. This is a... Uh, um, let's see, I've got quite a few more. This is an interesting one. This is a photo that Davis shot of um, men laying rails in the Pier Marquette rail yard. Um, now, let me see if I can get the autofocus to work. I'm just trying out the autofocus here. Uh, it's supposed to have a really good autofocus, but oh, you know what? There's cat fur by the lens. Maybe that. <laughs> uh, Maybe that will help. But uh, information on the back. Um, actually, it's on the front. Lane Track, Pierre Marquette Railroad, Plymouth, Michigan. Uh, I believe this was shot around 1914. There's no date on the card, but that's about when um, he started uh, doing postcards, 1913, 1912. Uh, so let me see if I can get in a bit closer here. That's eh, not that great, but the photo is just perfectly clear. Uh, again, this may have been published. I haven't checked all of my books yet. I haven't had time, but that might be something of interest. Um, this one was really, really interesting to me. Uh, this was shot in 1914 by Davis Hilmer in Pier Marquette Railmen. And I believe that this is the coal bin. Now I have some maps of the Pier Marquette rail yard that showed 
this I believe this bin uh, and it's rather long as you can see um, but uh, and I wish I knew the names of the four gentlemen maybe this could be researched uh, in some way um, a lot of the photos I have they're well documented and um, um, Davis wrote on the backs others uh, he did not so but unfortunately the only thing I have in the back of this is 1914 question mark so that's another interesting one this is one of my favorites too um, now I actually scanned a portion of this photo quite some time ago and I zoomed in uh, on the men in front of the engine I was trying to identify the men um, there's a person by the name of Sandy McDaniel I believe her family she had a family member that worked for the rail uh, lines so I thought she might know who these people are but somebody has to know but this is a uh, engine number 293 it looks like and this no uh, 296 Pierre Marquette and it's a beautiful photograph this was printed shot and printed by Davis B Hilmer um, and this uh, oh actually you know what we have three names of the five on the back um, George Knapp uh, Jack Strohe, S-T-R-O-H-E. This is left to right, so that's one and two. Three and four. Oh, you know what? I wrote on the back, Harry LaBelle. I think I may have asked my stepfather who that third one was, and Bill Warnett may have identified him. Number four is unknown, and number five is Bill Schultz, possibly. So this would be a great photo. This is shot right at the Pierre Marquette rail yard right in Plymouth, and... Uh, um, there's a blow up of this section right here of the five men on the Plymouth, um, Canton, Northville, uh, local politics and history Facebook group. I posted it some time ago, but nobody was able to identify the, the five individuals in that photo. But that might be something that's of interest, uh, for the upcoming book. Um, this is a photo of men on a, um, hand rail cart. Now, Uncle Davis wrote, um, and I'll hold it up close in a moment, section crew at Plymouth in front of hand car train, I think. This, this handwriting was sometimes really difficult to, to uh, read, but uh, crystal clear. Uncle Davis was just, even when he started out, as a young man, he was just a master. He was a master at doing these. I mean, I, I could zoom in on these faces and blow it way up, and you can see the expressions on all the faces, just glass plate negatives. You, you can't, you still can't beat them to this day. I think it's the best, the best medium for black and white photography. Um, and I think I showed you the one where the I have to be careful with these um, yeah that's the track lane photo that's a duplicate um, and here's another photo now I think this was published in the pictures of Plymouth book I don't know if the, the information went with it but Davis B Hilmer shot this photo um, in uh, 1915 and he's got the handwriting on the back is quite good. Old lunchroom of Dan Smith, photo made in 1950, while owned by Jack String, photo by Davis B. Hilmer. <laughs> and he wrote on here, returned to him by January 15th, 1976. He was very uh, possessive about his photographs and very picky about who handled them. Um, <laughs> but that was Uncle Davis. Um, and, uh, what else do I have here? Uh, a lot of these have already been shown. Now, there's a couple here, and I don't have any documentation on her. I, I don't think this was the great train wreck. There, there have been several train wrecks in Plymouth, uh, in days gone by. Um, and I don't know if this was the one where people 
uh, died or not, but I'm just going to hold this up here. Um, the photo is crystal clear. It's, it's probably hard to see with the webcam, but you know, there's one. And uh, here is the other. Um, okay. Those are, I think, the only two that I don't have a lot of data on. Now, this one, I actually made... I actually made this contact print when I was a kid off of uh, negatives. My Uncle Davis taught me how to do contact printing off of glass plate negatives. So this isn't, the, the print isn't that old, but it was off of the original negative. Um, my cousin, Davis Wallace, uh, ended up with the negative of this one. Um, second cousin, I should say. Not that he's any less a cousin. And uh, what else do I have? Um, this was shot by Davis Hilmer. This is the Frank J. Pierce restaurant and railway hotel. Um, and uh, he, Davis Hilmer shot this in 1914. I think this may have been published in the pictures of Plymouth. Now this burned down. This was right next to uh, the uh, freight depot. And as you can see right here, um, this is the uh, the uh, Pier Marquette train station, which is still standing. And uh, this was all wiped out by fire. This is where the parking lot is now, but there was a hotel right there. So that's kind of neat. And um, what else do I have? This this is well known. This I this is the photo I uh, um, wrote about in the Plymouth Observer a few years back. Uh, you can see the, uh, if you look really close, I zoomed in on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't know what that was. I wanted to read that handbill, and it actually turned out to be the, what I think is the first ever uh, schedule of passenger service coming through Plymouth. Um, but that's in the Observer article uh, I did a few years back, uh, the description of this whole photo. Um, and what else do we have here? Another photo of 1914. Um, now, this is interesting. It, it looks to be um, equipment to put... Uh, it, it could be, you know what, I think this might be a, a, a streetcar crew because you can see the rails running right in front of the homes. And they've got some heavy equipment in front. Uh, you can see the rail at the bottom of the photo there. And um, so maybe we could do a little research on into this one. Unfortunately, the only thing I have on the back of this photo is the date of 1914. Uh, I know Davis shot this photo because it's his handwriting. And, um, and uh, what else do we have? Now... Here are a series of prints that I shot. Oh, no, not that I shot. A series of prints that uh, Davis Hilmer shot, and I printed when I was a teenager. I laid all three out on one sheet of uh, uh, Kodak paper. Um, there is another train wreck. And um, now this is the trestle. Um, and uh, this is the Detroit Urban Railway trestle. Up, oh, but it's, it's Rochester, Michigan. So he went, he went up to Rochester, Michigan, and uh, took a photo of that trestle, uh, the DUR, Detroit Urban Railway. So it's not really a Plymouth photo, but it's kind of neat. Uh, that wreck, uh, I think that was a local Plymouth wreck. I'm not sure. And this is a winter scene after the, um, the uh, snow had been plowed. And uh, let's see, what else? Um, now this, I believe, many years later, this was shot, I believe, by my grandfather, Carl. This looks like his camera. Um, this is a steam train pulling through Old Village. Um, I think it's around possibly 1950 because, well, it's hard to tell. It may have been... An, um, a situation where they were bringing a steam uh, engine through town 
after steam engines had been um, um, retired because diesel came to, through Plymouth starting in around in 1946, I believe, in that area, right after the war. Um, so this could have been shortly before or shortly after um, the steam engines had been retired. It's Pier Marquette, and you can see the train station there on um, uh, um, next to the uh, engine. But uh, that's my mom's handwriting on the back. Um, and uh, here's another set of four prints that, that I actually did uh, the contact prints of. Um, this is kind of a neat one. This, I believe, is the uh, train coming across. I believe it's the train, the, the engine coming across the uh, uh, bridge, possibly at Gonzale Mill. Um, I think that's what Uncle Davis told me, but I can't exactly remember. I'm pretty sure that's it. This is a copy of the same um, postcard I showed you earlier, and that's that's where I grew up. Uh, and this one, this is a, uh, this looks to be a, a fire. Occurred. I've got to identify this one yet. Um, And this is actually a flood. Um, I'm not sure if this is a Detroit Urban Railway, but we'll have to, I'll have to, maybe this can be identified somehow. I don't know if this is Plymouth or Rochester, but it's obviously a flood. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just tinkering with my camera here just to see how it works. Um, And I think that's about all I have in this folder. Um, other than this, um, Carl Starkweather for a time was a streetcar conductor in Detroit and during the 1920s. And here it is a photograph of uh, Carl right in front of the streetcar that he uh, operated for a time. He was on the Gratiot line. So he was a real railroad buff. He worked in the industry for a short time in the local transportation. So anyway, those are a few photos I have. I've got a lot more to go through here, but um, just, just a little taste. Thanks for looking in.